folks. Welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Well, hopefully some of you got in on our live stream last night. Um, my wife and I, we don't do it too often, but uh, every once in a while we just get on and very impromptu, uh, little direction on what we're going to talk about or anything. Uh, we just take questions and uh, just laid back kind of kind of feel. Uh, it was a two hour one last night. We usually don't go for two hours. But anyways, it is available if you're interested in watching us act ridiculous and answer questions and and just be ourselves for two hours. But we enjoy doing it. It uh, helps kind of with the more personal connection with you, the viewer. So anyways, I just thought I would mention that. It went really well. Always enjoy those. Wanted to talk to you again. I know you're tired of it already. You're like, ah, listen, I've been dealing with this for, for like three years. I don't want to hear it anymore. I, I'm the same way. But I think we should probably pay attention at least for a while. And that is all this talk and all this increase of the illnesses going around the country. Now, I am not absolutely saying that we're headed towards another massive health crisis, another slate of mandates and lockdowns. I am saying though that it's very possible. They're already calling it a triple-demic. I talked about that the other day. Uh, some new term, of course, they've coined because it's not just one illness, it's three illnesses that are spreading all over. It's the COVID, the flu, and the RSV. And the thing is, is it, it really is affecting a lot of people. I, I, I've said this before. In the last few weeks, uh, my goodness, I'd say probably well over half of the people that, that we know, uh, at least someone in their household has been sick. And it's probably the same way with you. I would say the vast majority of you listeners, uh, someone that in your home has been sick in the last, say, 30 days or so. Uh, and sometimes it seems to be pretty serious. There was a, a little boy, he's, his family is part of our little community here, uh, good friends of ours. And he got RSV a while back, had to be hospitalized. And I mean, there was some hardcore praying going on because he was kind of touch and go for a little bit. He's doing fine now, but um, it's serious. My granddaughters, both of them, uh, had it a couple of weeks ago. So it, it, it is affecting people. People are getting the sniffles and the cough and the croup and, and fevers. And some people are getting it pretty bad. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there's not something else at play here. Uh, and we always have to keep an open mind to that because, well, what we've been through for the last three years, you know, I, it's, it's kind of silly uh, if it weren't so serious. <clears throat> well, they're starting to already, we're already starting to see things that they're, they're wanting to do. The CDC in the last few days have, they're, they're not mandating anything, okay? So, so as, as of right now, it doesn't appear that there's any hardcore mandates out there, at least in this country. But the CDC is recommending, strongly recommending, that people start putting their, their little, you know, bandanas on again. It is interesting on this recommendation at the bottom, it's recommending strongly to use N95 style masks or respirators, which is different than over the last couple of years where they said, ah, you know, it's just put a piece of pantyhose over your mouth and you'll be fine. You know, any kind of piece of cloth or anything, anything, it doesn't matter. I mean, you can put some fish netting over your face and that'll protect you. But now they're saying, well, you, you probably should go with the stronger ones that actually are designed to kind of reduce, you know, these minuscule particles from flying into your mouth. Uh, the New York, city of New York, uh, they are, it uh, looks like that they're, they are implementing or strongly worded, you know, encouraging people uh, to wear theirs. And then L.A. is uh, toying around with the idea, it seems, that it could happen. They're saying maybe after the first of the year, uh, they could be implementing one also. So <clears throat> there, it, it is starting to grow a little bit. And as much as you might think, and I thought of this, as much as you might think that that there's just a ton of people, even the people that believe it's all real, believe what the government said all along, even those people, many of them are just tired of this. They are absolutely tired of it. But I don't think it will take too much just because, well, 
when you get a lot of people together, they're like cattle. But I don't think it would take too much to get a decent majority of the American people all hyped up and scared again. Especially, and maybe this is being done on purpose, especially when you see that the amount of illnesses are kind of skyrocketing around the country. Here's a couple of maps. This first one here um, is the COVID uh, case count. And, you know, we're used to seeing these. These are those dumbed down maps. It's like taking crayons and drawing a picture for, you know, a child or a Marine. I mean, I'm sorry. I had to say that, though. Um, these maps here, this COVID one here, you know, they, it's all red or mostly red. It makes it, oh, it's terrifying. It's terrifying. Here's another one here. This is a uh, flu. That shows the, the, the intensity of, of how flu is, is taking over. I couldn't find one for RSV, but I'm sure they, if they made one, it would look pretty much the same. And so as these cases start spreading around and as more and more people are really experiencing sickness, I mean, it's crazy because three or four years ago, you know, if you got the flu, people didn't panic. But now we do, okay? And when someone in the house has the flu and someone in the house has COVID and the two little kids have, you know, RSV, people get scared. And they're also getting worried because we're hearing how the, the hospital beds are filling up. You know, hospitals are at maximum capacity. And they are, but as I've been uh, informed by several people that work in the hospitals, it's not as quite as clear as what it seems. Uh, the reason why these hospitals are filling up is because they're grossly understaffed and hospitals can only have so many beds per staff, okay, uh, open. And so because of all the COVID, because of all the, you know, the nurses that quit or that were fired because they didn't get this, uh, all this kind of stuff, the hospitals, many of them are having to shut down entire wings, and so they have less beds available so that the ones that they do have are maxed out. Uh, we're seeing reports all over the country of shortages of the medications that are used to treat these illnesses, whether they're over the counter or prescription. And so as this stuff kind of continues to build, those people, even the ones that may be a, totally aware of the truth of what's going on, uh, start to get more and more scared. And it wouldn't take too much for them to fall in line due to panic and fear uh, to whatever the government says. I think that this is possible. Maybe something like this is what's happening in China. Probably all of you are familiar with what's been going on in China over the last few weeks where they, they come down with the harshest of lockdowns thus far. I mean, the stuff that we saw two or three years ago, it's been worse. I mean, yes, they're welding people in homes dragging people off, putting them in quarantine. It was awful. And of course, it's, you know, caused a lot of uh, Chinese citizens to protest. They, they revolted, they protest. Um, and then the government announced that they were going to be, you know, scaling back the mandate, scaling back the, the rules and regulations because of that. And already the, the government is saying that they're seeing a massive uptick in new cases since the, you know, regulations have been kind of eased. Uh, it's very possible that this has been done on purpose. I mean, think about it. Uh, come down really hard, get everyone, you know, in a tizzy or at least enough people, and then you let off and then watch the case counts explode. And then all the people that weren't in a tizzy and, re you know, rebelling and protesting, now they're going to blame all of those people. They're going to say, listen, you, you let all these people out run around protesting. Now, well, look what's happened. You've spread this disease even worse. And so then they'll be begging for more lockdowns. Uh, it's very possible that that could be a strategy that's going on here in the United States. Uh, Americans and people in general, they're really weak when it comes to that. They, they, it's hard for them to see through, just like I just said. Uh, people in general, they tend to be like cattle. I'm not saying that individually they are, but when you group them together, uh, it's, it's very similar. So, so it's possible that that could be a motive. I, in the end, we have to realize that in the end, uh, the, the, the main goal, I think, uh, is to, and this is very much a Marxist uh, concept, is to just get the people fighting with each other. I mean, that's, that's in the end what it is. Uh, they, they want, I think that's, if you could look at so many things, look at the politics, the stuff going on with the, the two different parties here in the United States and the, the potential future presidential candidates and, and all the scandals going on from each other. I think in the end, it's just trying to get the people to, to stand up and, and to fight each other. 
And honestly, I believe that, that the, 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 the people ruling the world uh, really do want uh, some type of civil war. I think they want it. I think it would play into their, to their benefit in the end. Uh, so be cautious of, of this, uh, all these illnesses. I'm not saying they don't exist. I'm just saying be cautious and, and be on your toes when it comes to the, the stuff coming down from the, you know, the, the, the top of the hill. Now, recommendations for preps, and of course, I'm not a doctor and I'm not going to get on here and give any medical advice, but I would certainly, uh, like I said the other day, make sure you're stocked up on over-the-counter medications. Uh, you know, whatever natural protocols that you're used to using over the past two or three years, make sure you got the stuff for that. Um, if you don't know what to do uh, naturally, I can recommend a, a very good naturopathic doctor. I have no business affiliation with him, but he is a close personal friend. Uh, he has a, a practice, but he also does online consulting and stuff. And you can go to Simpli, Simply Your Health, Simply Your Health, that's it. Dot com. I'll leave a link below in the description. Uh, he is is very highly, uh, you know, credentialed for uh, you know natural type things. So you could go to his website and maybe get some some uh, information or talk to him about what you should do. But the bottom line is is that that there is there's people getting sick. There's illnesses all over, and it seems like this time around, it's affecting the young people more important more than anything. Uh, and I just can't believe that they would allow uh, the whole hype and the power of the fear of this health crisis to just dwindle away to nothing. Uh, it, it's, it's, I think, very likely that we're going to start seeing more and more hype about it. Just in the last couple of weeks, we have already uh, so much talk about it and the news. Uh, so, again, we just need to be on our toes it may may not be as bad as it was a couple of years ago. It could be worse. And I'm talking about the government reaction, the people's reaction. Um, it could be worse. It could be something new. Uh, there's all kinds of rumors that I cannot confirm in any way, shape, or form, but there's all kinds of rumors online that, that there's there's a new variant, a new version, a new something that's that's has been released or is getting ready to be released. Uh, we don't know. We have no way of knowing until it hits us. So that's why we are preppers. That's why we stay prepared because we don't know the future. It's uncertain. Uh, and so we do everything that we can within our powers to get ourselves ready for that. And that's what you need to be doing, stocking up, getting ready, uh, going over. I know you've had some, some rest from all of this for, for the last year or so, but, but get back into it and, and uh, go over what you need to be doing, doing the research of the types of protocols you should be implementing in your home just in case you do get really sick. And then also just stocking up and getting ready because the way this next year is looking economically, if there was some type of other, you know, major health crisis, it could be the final straw that breaks the camel, camel's back. So get ready for that also. Folks, in the end, you have to just keep getting your houses in order, preparing yourselves mentally, physically, and most especially spiritually. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.